Good job, everybody. My name is Awesome Crunch, and welcome back to some more Subnautica news. Now, this episode, it is all to do with encyclopedia entries, and there has been quite a few that have been updated, and a couple that have been added, I believe. Uh, and I've been talking to Bipti and Eden and people like that about it, just to see which ones are new, which ones aren't, which ones have been updated, stuff like that. So, hopefully this is the complete list of new ones, and if it's not, please do go ahead and tell me in the comments below. This is the first video of today of on Subnautica. I'm, there may be another one later later, uh, I'm not entirely sure yet, so keep an eye out for that, and if it's not out tonight, it will be out tomorrow, so. First bit we're going to check out is the anchor pods, which are these things that are in the deep Grand Reef and the Grand Reef. Uh, and they've been added, they've got a thing now. Um, these unusual flora specimens have been encountered exclusively on the deep reefs. They consist of a large spherical gas-filled membrane anchored to the seafloor by its root system. At these depths, it is unlikely this structure is designed to enhance access to sunlight, but rather the pod's ability to propagate. Once the pods attain sufficient height, they burst, releasing spores which catch the current and disperse around the local area. So essentially, I think... By spores, it means, essentially, I think it means seeds. Uh, so when it explodes, the seeds go out kind of thing, and they get thrown around by the current, and they land somewhere, and they plant more. I think is the idea behind that. I'm not entirely sure, but that's just what I'm inferring. Um, so that's really, really cool. Uh, I didn't expect any kind of lore behind the anchor pods, but it's nice that they're there. Um, just so it gives a little bit more realism to the game, I guess. A bit more reason for the existence of them, because they seemed pretty cool, but they never really had a reason. Um, so the next one is actually interestingly in scavengers and parasites, uh, which is a bit weird because it's not a fauna or a coral or a... F oh no, it is a co it's classed as a fauna, but it's not a coral and it's not a flora. But I'll show you a picture of them now. They're quite strange, um, but apparently they're these. Scavengers and parasites. So, a simple, non-sentient organism found attached to land with high levels of fossilized organic matter. It feeds on this matter until it reaches maturity, at which point it divides to create two new, genetically identical offspring, and the cycle continues. So, these things are really strange. I'll try and go to the uh, Lost River now, because I think that's where they mostly are. Okay, I'll see if I can find one later on, but for the moment, I'd rather just get on to the next things uh, before, before worrying about actually finding an amoeboid, because I haven't seen one yet, uh, and I'm not entirely sure where they're based. So, um, next one we're going to do is the pyro coral, and as you can imagine, this is p coral. It's, it's in the name. This coral species is unlike any other encountered on 4546B, insofar as it relies on magma flow rather than water current to deliver nutrients. As lava rises up from the planet's core and erupts at the vents, this coral forms around the base until eventually it has surrounded the entire vent. Lava is then funneled up through the coral, allowing it to siphon minerals and heat as it goes. So these things here, these are pyro corals. Um, they are those really, really cool things. Um, and it's just nice to have a bit of story about why they have such bright, glowing tips. Okay, so the next one is crab claw kelp. A blue-tipped kelp species which tends to grow in or near to acidic brine pools on the ocean floor. These brine pools are hazardous to most life forms, however the crab claw has adapted by developing a thick, inflexible root system which can withstand the environment and which raises the sensitive blue feeding nodules above the level of the brine. I'm sure these are based in the Lost River and I'm pretty sure they, these are them here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these are them. So yeah, they're, they're really cool. <laughs> And it's just, as I said before, it's nice to have some reasoning behind their existence. Okay, so it turns out I did actually miss one, uh, and I noticed this during editing, so I'm just going to read it to you now. It is the ancient floaters, which are the big floaters that keep up the floating island, and the various little islands underwater in the islands biome. So, it reads, Biodata suggests that these vast floaters have matured in an ingenious symbiosis with the land and ecosystems they have attached to. The attached land mass is raised in the water, increasing sunlight and encouraging plant growth. The floater likely leaches a composite of organic residues and minerals from the rock itself. These circumstances must have held for thousands of years for the floaters to reach this size. So obviously that is talking about the main huge ones at the floating island, so I thought that would be worth telling you guys about. Okay, so the next ones are more based on the skeletons here, based here in the Lost River, and the first one we're going to go and look at is the one at the lab which is just around here, and then finally we'll save the best till last, because there is some seriously juicy stuff that's been added about the Gargantuan Leviathan, which it is now officially called in the game. It's really interesting, so stick around for that. Okay, so this thing here is the one that we want to look at for the moment. It will be in Deceased, and it is the Ancient Fossilized Skull. Now, what's quite strange about this is that the game is referring to it as a fossilized skull, 
and I think that's what they're going with, that it is a skull. But to me, it doesn't look like a skull at all. This looks like the skull, this this front plate, if you if you get what I mean. And these look like, I don't know, sections for arms, or they look they have the same structure as like a kind of rib cage. Um and yet it's a whole skull of some massive creature. I don't understand how that works. Um it's a bit strange to me. But I don't know, it just doesn't look like a skull to me, but I guess anything can be a skull. It just it, the front looks a bit small for it all to be a skull, but you know, that's just my opinion. Tell me what you think in the comments below. I'd be interested to read it. Oh, in fact, here's an amoeboid. These are them here. These weird looking things. So those are scavengers and parasites, because that's interesting. Okay, so we'll read about this. The skull of a million year old armoured carnivore. Projections suggest this life form would have been larger than any living specimen encountered on the planet. The oceans of 4546b must have been very different to support life forms of this size, with more open geography and many more life forms in the Leviathan range. This again is kind of um, advancing on the theory that the Lost River kind of just was a collapsed cave, I think is, is the theory for the moment. Um, a lot of people are going with it, kind of just collapsed into existence, uh, and the ground gave way, and stuff like that, and that's why it's all like this now. Because obviously, Leviathans like this would not have fitted into the Lost River. Um, and I believe they've changed the law up now about the Gargantuan Leviathan having starved down here, because I think that's now inaccurate, because uh, of the, the way they've changed it. I'm not entirely sure how they've changed it, but I remember people telling me about that. Whoa. Okay, so this one is, as you know, the Gargantuan Leviathan, and now this is the really interesting one. So it's listed as the Gargantuan Fossils, so we'll read this. The fossilized remains of a seemingly extinct super predator. Its sheer size would have prohibited it from entering such an enclosed space, suggesting the geography of the planet has shifted around it over time. Therefore, he did not die of starvation. That is, that is old law. It's not a, that does not apply anymore. That was from a while ago, but it doesn't apply anymore. Dated at approximately 3 million years old. Ribcage measurements suggest the creature was eel-like in structure, so there were no limbs, uh, I assume is what that means. Um, so it was literally just a long snake kind of thing in the water, which is terrifying. And that's not even the most terrifying bit. The next bit is. Calculations suggest this is only the front third of the specimen. The front third. That means there are two more of these lengths of it left somewhere, uh, maybe buried under the ground somewhere, or it's been taken away by the currents or something like that. This is one third of the length. This is not the entire Leviathan. That is mental trousers. That is huge. That's like 1,500 meters in length, something like that. I think Bippity um, said it would be something like that. That is absolutely crazy. Do you think that's just weird? I mean, it's awesome. <laughs> this is only a third of its size. That is crazy. It's the biggest thing in the game by far. And it's not even as big as it would have been. That is crazy. That is absolutely crazy. So yeah, that's, that's the interesting bit. The remains now support a vibrant mi microcosm of life, which, as you can see, it does because of all of the stuff. Note. There are a series of precise angular indentations on the ribcage suggesting a third party has taken samples from the specimen at a previous time, uh, which is, of course, is referencing to the precursors who did some shady shears with it uh, while they were experimenting on it, I assume, taking samples, seeing what was the cause of death, um, stuff like that. So yeah, so yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. That is all of the uh, encyclopedia updates that I am aware of. If there are any more that I missed, please do tell me in the comments below. There may be another Subnautica video coming later today, and if it does not come today, it will be tomorrow, because it's really exciting news, and pretty recent as well. Um, and it, it's going to be really cool. So I'm going to leave this one here, guys. So if you did enjoy the video, please give it a like. If you're feeling really, really generous, subscribe to come have a crunchy day. But until next one, I'll see you guys in the next one. Try, my friends.